Giza. Designer radiators and towel rails. This is a consumer information video exclusively about electric radiators. It will answer these six questions to fully educate both domestic end users and tradesmen. We have separate videos for infrared electric which use different technology and can be ceiling mounted for central heating radiators and for dual fuel radiators which run on both central heating and electric. So ensure you are watching the correct video. Hi, I'm Alex, Director here at Giza. Hi, I'm Daniel, part of our sales team, knowledgeable in all technical aspects of our products. Electric radiators are often found in apartment buildings, which typically don't have gas. Electric radiators are also regularly put into extensions or conservatories, and they tend to be found in offices, like seen here in this boardroom. Giza offer three different types of electric radiators. One, radiant heat, two, convected heat, and three, radiant and convected combination models. So let's further educate you to help you buy your electric radiator. How do I calculate the required output for my electric radiator? We recommend using the highly advanced heat requirement calculator found on our website, geezer.co.uk. This uses the very latest user interface with slider bars. Simply select electric heating from the drop-down at the top. You'll answer a series of questions about dimensions, wall types, window area, etc. It will then give you the results in both watts and kilowatts. Electric heating is measured this way where 1 kilowatt equals 1000 watts. How do the three different types of electric radiators generate heat? How radiant heat electric radiators work. With our electric radiators listed as radiant heat in the title, you'll experience an ambient radiated heat, like the heat from the sun. As this heat flow diagram shows, warmth will emit from the entire surface area of the radiator, just like from a central heating radiator. The vast majority of Giza's radiant heat electric radiators are in actual fact our central heating radiators, which we have specially modified so that they can be fitted as either energy type. So to put this in context, here you can see the valve fitted to this radiator as central heating, versus the electric heating element fitted to the same radiator as electric. We fill the radiant heat radiators with a water-based heating solution with two additives. Firstly, Fernox Rust Inhibitor, which eliminates lime scale and prevents rusting. And secondly, Fernox Boiler Noise Silencer, which prevents the bubbling sound generated from hot water, like from a kettle. The solution inside is heated by one of three types of electric heating element we supply with them, which work in very much the same way the element in a kettle or an immersion heater works. The first type of element supplied across multiple ranges we offer are these round shaped elements named mower, where you can select the internal temperature between 20 and 70 degrees. If you're looking for an LST, low surface temperature radiator, you can reprogram this mower element to reduce the upper limit on the temperature to then work like LST. The color of mower element supplied is dependent on the color of the radiator, from a selection of white, black, chrome or matte silver. The second type of element supplied is the golf club shaped one which comes with the aluminium radiator ranges. These elements have a thinner diameter probe on them to fit inside the narrow internal cavity on this type of radiator. The elements are supplied in either white or chrome. And finally the third type of element supplied comes with the traditional column electric radiators. These elements sit horizontally inside, meaning the rotating analog control dial is located on the side of the radiator. Again, colour of element supplied is dependent on the radiator from a selection of white, black or satin gold. Our lower heat output electric radiators are supplied with one element and some of the higher heat output radiators are supplied with two elements to effectively heat the higher volume of solution inside these models. So that's how the radiant heat electric radiators work. How convected heat electric heaters work. Convector heaters work differently in that they don't radiate heat, but convect it. As this heat flow diagram shows, they create air movement by pulling cold air in at the bottom, heating it over a filament and projecting warm air up out of the top. Similar to the dry heat felt in a sauna. Lie on the floor in a room heated with convection and it would feel slightly cooler in that space closest to the floor compared with when you stand up. Convector heaters give very instantaneous heat, as within a few minutes of switching them on, warm air will start to circulate. Convector heaters are great 
for rooms used less often where you want instant heat, such conservatories, second bedrooms, or cold rooms which are infrequently used. In coldest winter, when you want a boost of heat, convector heaters are perfect and can be brought out from storage and used on freestanding feet. If you have high ceilings, be cautious with convector heaters, as the warm air can congregate up in the ceiling void. A ceiling fan will successfully distribute warm air back down. Commercial properties nearly always have electric convector heaters installed, as they are the cheapest to buy. Convector heaters are economical to run, but may use slightly more power than models which radiate heat, as opposed to this constant projection of warm air. So that's how simple and functional convection heaters work. How radiant and convected combination electric radiators work. The combination radiators are the most economical of the three types of electric radiator we offer due to their dual heat sources. As this heat flow diagram shows, they radiate out heat from within and they also convect warm air out the top. Hence why these are a combination unit. The visible open channels act like a chimney pulling cold air in from underneath and emitting warm air out of the top. In addition, each of the combination units contains one of three substances, dependent on the model, either A, oil, B, stone, or C, cast iron. The thermal properties of this substance helps build up a store of heat, which provides the radiant heat. So let's compare the three types of substances. A, oil. Oil heats up very quickly, so the oil fill models are great for rooms occupied less often, second bedrooms or conservatories. This radiator in our showroom has been cut open to show the internal chambers where the oil would be, in green. B, stone. The stone fill models are embedded with a natural soapstone. This radiator on display in our showroom has been cut open to reveal the stone embedded deep inside the radiator, also seen here in this exploded technical drawing. The stone has a very high heat storage capacity which offers very good energy efficiency. It's important to stress here these are not the old fashioned Economy 7 brick filled storage heaters which gradually store up heat during the night and then emit it throughout the day. Most customers are replacing Economy 7 with the new electric radiators that we offer. C. Cast iron. The models featuring a cast iron heat exchange has a very high level of inertia which is the ability to achieve and maintain a consistent heat output. These cast iron units use 45% less energy than other ranges and a couple of features which back up this fact are one, its energy consumption indicator which shows you how much energy it's using where green to amber is okay and upwards towards red means the unit is consuming too much energy for its settings and two, its open window detection feature whereby when a window is opened the unit will turn itself off so as not to try and compete in maintaining the chosen temperature against cold air coming in through an open window. So in summarising all three substances available with the combination models, the oil units are perfect for those working office hours and returning home in the evening due to their quick heat up times, and the stone and cast iron models are ideal if you're at home for most of your day, i.e. if you're retired or you work from home, as overall they're the most economical to run. Where is the best place to install my electric radiator? The ideal place to locate any radiator is on an outside wall and under or next to a window if possible. To put this in context, here you can see a window where cold air will come in and travel downwards. Here is what happens above a radiator. Heat is emitted and travels upwards. So if you place a radiator under a window, this is what happens. The cold air coming in through the window is mixed with the hot air coming up from the radiator which then combines to create a nice ambient room temperature. How do you install and operate the three different types of electric radiator? Installing and operating radiant heat electric radiators. So to remind you, as we've already covered, these are the water-based fluid-filled radiators we refer to as radiant heat. Many people like to attempt their own DIY, but we advise you call to book a fully qualified electrician to install. Giza stipulates a 40 hour window to open your radiator to check for courier damage and report this back to us. At the same time, we advise removing the double sided A350 instructions we supply. When your electrician arrives, physically hand these to them as they might not have fitted a Giza radiant heat electric radiator before. The heating elements are supplied loose, with this water fill type only. 
To protect the elements in transit, and if your model has only one element supplied with it, it allows you to choose which side of the radiator to have the element located, dependent on your electric supply or your walls, etc. The electrician will turn the radiator around to remove the corresponding blank plug and insert the heating elements at the bottom. Once securely screwed into place, using a spanner, not the head of the element as this will damage it, the radiator can now be fitted to the wall and connected to the electric supply. If you have two elements with your chosen model, as seen here, they can both be wired into the same switch view spur. If you have purchased one of our timer devices, more details in question 6, it can now be installed in line with the supply. Note, at this point before switching on, we advise quickly checking the solution inside is fairly close to the top. To explain why, if the water inside isn't high enough, only the outer left and right bars where the elements are will get hot as at these points circled here, the water isn't high enough to pass across the top and back down the centre to be reheated by the elements and create the internal heat flow where all bars will get nice and hot. Now, the most important part of installation is commissioning for thermal expansion. Solution will expand when heated and retract when cooled. Just like this bottle, an electric radiator is a sealed unit. Commissioning creates the correct internal vacuum for expansion and retraction. Before switching on, the electrician must open the air vent located on top, turn anti-clockwise to open. Only now should the elements be switched on. When using two elements, they must both be running at the same temperature setting on both sides. As it's heating up to full temperature, any excess air or solution which isn't required for the vacuum is being emitted through the open air vent. You can catch the excess in a bowl, as seen here. Once the radiator is hot all over and all the LEDs have turned static, the air vent can now be closed, turn clockwise to close. Now, the correct internal vacuum has been created. Caution, if the radiator isn't commissioned for thermal expansion, as demonstrated here with this bottle, a buildup of pressure could potentially blow one of the plugs out of the top and hot solution could scald somebody. If commissioned correctly, this won't happen. There's a section for the electrician to sign that they have followed all instructions as your safeguard. Be sure to ask for these back so you can file these away for safekeeping as it also contains aftercare and troubleshooting notes. Installing and operating convected heat electric heaters. This type of heater is easy to install as they're supplied with a UK plug, so in this case you don't need to employ an electrician to install. Run the unit for a full 24 hour period at normal room temperature of 22 degrees for the unit to calibrate to the room. Our typical convector heaters feature a control panel located on the side and an LED display on the front, making them very easy to both set and verify the temperature. When fitting these, you should have a clearance of 50mm below and 150mm above to aid the circulation of air. Caution: Convector heaters must not have towels or clothes placed on them to dry. They need to be free from obstructions to allow them to work efficiently. Installing and operating radiant and convected combination electric radiators. As before, quickly check for any cosmetic damage on receipt of your radiators as you have 48 hours to report this back to us. If you are installing multiple high output units, around 2 kilowatts, these should potentially be put on their own dedicated ring. Consult your electrician for advice on this. Once the unit has been fitted to the wall on its brackets and then connected to the electricity supply via a fuse spur, there aren't any significant commissioning steps and they are pretty much plug and play. Consult the user manual to program the device as required. Leave clearances of approximately 150mm above and 50mm below the radiator on the wall to aid the convection process. Some of the radiant and convected combination ranges we offer, as seen here, also feature full smartphone controllability, so you can program and operate these remotely on the move, i.e. switch the radiator on from your car when you're 15 minutes away from home. You will require a bridging device to enable this, which is a link between your wireless router and the radiator itself. These particular units also feature smart, light and motion detectors to pick up on the presence of a human. So when left running in the auto mode, they can build up data on what times of the day they should be operable, as the radiator knows what times of the day a human is in the room. Very clever technology and worth the investment. Multiple units can be synced in zones, i.e. floors of the house, all linked together through radio frequency, where you have a master unit acting as the thermostat, and then other slave units working from it. Read over the features and benefits of each respective range in our catalogue, 
or on our website to see exactly what they each offer. Are electric radiators more expensive to run than central heating? There is often confusion about the running costs of electric heating compared with central heating. The foremost thing to remember is lots of new homes today are installed with electric heating by the builders, i.e. apartments. So if electric heating was expensive to run, there would be lots and lots of disappointed homeowners with apartments. The true costs of any heating system need to take into account the initial installation costs, plus the running costs, plus the hidden maintenance costs. Installing electric heating is far cheaper than central heating, so the saving made not installing a boiler in the pipework provides the extra cash in your piggy bank to fully offset against the running costs within your electricity bills. The cash saving can equate to around a year's worth of electric. Ching, ching. Electric radiators are 100% efficient at the point of use, so all the electricity is converted into heat, unlike boiler systems, where heat is wasted up through the flue. It is not possible to provide exact running costs when using an electric radiator, because there are so many variables to consider. Has the correct heat output for the space been calculated? What type of electric heating you install? The electric tariff you have on how long the radiator will be on for, and what setting the thermostat is on. So please consider all these factors to keep your overall energy bills to a minimum. What enhancements or accessories do you offer for electric radiators? We offer two kinds of timer. Most electric radiators we offer come with some form of timer included, which can be as basic as a two hour drying function, up to a more advanced seven day timer. If you'd like something more advanced than the standard timer supplied, you can consider one of our separate timers. This is the standard timer, which has multiple options for your on off periods. Or this is the combination timer and fuse spur in one. A fuse spur is the on off switch your electrician will supply and you'll need one of these regardless. So this combined device saves having two units on the wall. Note, the elements supplied with the radiant heat models will remember the temperature settings is switched off and then on again by the timer. So there you are, now you know all you need to know to make an informed decision about purchasing an electric radiator and whether you should buy radiant heat convected heat or radiant and convected combination. We acknowledge the content of this video is very in depth, so you may wish to re-watch certain sections depending which model type you're interested in buying. We hope that you have found this as part of our series of technical videos very helpful and thank you for watching. Giza Radiators, a hot spring of designer heating ideas.